It is a delightfully cool morning here in South Louisiana, and I'm with two of my favorite fishing buddies, Jeff Brule and Chris Macaluso. We're launching really close to home today, making a very, very short trip just into Lake Pontchartrain to go find some of these fall speckled trout. These fish have moved in already. You know, we had those big storm surges that certainly helped to push them in, but even before then, that transition was getting rolling and those fish were moving in. None of us has fished this specific area yet this fall, but those fish should be here, so we're optimistic about the day. Let's we'll see what happens. Like. The trout that I caught with Kevin and Ryan back in July of yours that were just gorging themselves on mullet and pogies. Yeah. Nasty. Oh, I mean, it tastes <laughs> right, right. It's such a difference. A fish has been eating shrimp so much tastier. I put them in the, you know, into the boiler and, and man, they, they, they were awful. They were awful. <laughs> they were awful. Yeah, see, Mac. Yeah, yeah. yeah, nice bass for the marsh. There we go. Good fish. There you go. On the voodoo. There's one. Ooh, On the point. Got another bass, see, Mac. Like a bass. Oh, 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 good bass. Good bass. Oh, there you go. Another one on the voodoo. About a pound and a half, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a little under. Good marsh bass. Let me give you a hand here. That's a trout. That's a trout. Good fish on a voodoo. Man, that's a good fish. Good job, C Mac. Nice fish. Well, see, Mac. The bad news is, <laughs> it's picture time. <laughs> That's good fish, man. Nice. Big, big trout, man. What you got there, Jeff? That's that Mr. Bass, I believe. That Mr. Bass. On Not a bad fish. Nope. Also on a voodoo. On the voodoo. The bait of the day. The bait of the day. Looks like I'm gonna have to tie on a voodoo. Dude, is that a yad or what? Trying to all over out there. Ooh, bait. You had one? Yeah, I had a bait. There he is. Oh. Come on. There and see me. There'll be nothing here in the next 20, 30 minutes. We can run that direction. Uh oh. Wrong flavor. Feels like a it could be a red. There it feels like a cat. Nope. It's a red. Good eater. Alright. Thank you, Jeff. So that fish hit the new matrix shrimp under my Versamax bowl cork. It's a little tiny shrimp. It's not very big at all, but elephants eat peanuts. Oh, there he is. Oh, I lost mine. Oh, you did? Sure did. I might have seen that you have. <laughs> he didn't feel very big. What she said. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. There's some grass up here, you can see it. The yeah. color change here. Yeah. There we go. What you got there, C Mac? Trout. Bass. 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 Hooked him in the head. 
top of the hill here. You want him? Yeah, I'll keep him. That looks like a bass, huh? I think he's a specky. Is he? Let's I'm see. Like a speck. Let's see. He is way off the bank, so. Oh, nice trout. Broke your line. At least you got him in. Yep. Good fish. Rattling shrimp. There you go. It's so typical this time of year, you catch these random good fish just in the middle of nothing. Oh, 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 oh. Anchor down, That's boy. a little smaller than Jeff's. This is not Jeff's. <laughs> <laughs> Anchor down, boys. Might be a keeper. Nah, he's yeah, too little. No. Here we go. That's definitely a trouter. There we That's a good trout. Come in here, boy. Boy, you know that fellow, Good fish, good fish. That fellow fish all through here. Yeah. And left? And left. Yeah. Now he's done, but she's nice. She's real sweet. No, I mean, we, she's playing with the dog. <laughs> well, this is nice. This is a nice fish. I don't know what he is, but he's nice. Like a trout. Yeah. All right, double. First double of the wow. day. It's a good trout, C Mac. Oh, oh it was. Yours is not bad, too. Look at that. that good trout. Nice. Good trout. Holy Jolie Matrix Shad on a 1 16th ounce death grip jig head, which I went with because it's kind of shallow in here and we're fishing over these eelgrass beds. C Mac and Jeff are doing well with corks, but I wanted to see if I could do something different. And there he is. There he is. Get on the cock. That's a good fish. Get him, brah. Ah, eh, maybe not. I think he's a keeper, though. Not bad, not bad. Whew, look at that. Lucky to get him. <laughs> That's the thing, man. They're not smoking. The no, they're not. They, they they're not, not taking it deep. That's because really? that tide's not really moving. Right. At least we're bothering them enough to get him to bite. You got him? Yeah. yeah, good fish. Nice. Nice. Bass. Oh, bass. Oh, it is a bass. <laughs> I thought he had a trout. Well, I saw that big mouth. I'm like, well, I'm that's a nice trout. On bass, man. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many people from out of state are amazed, and I mean absolutely amazed, that we catch speckled trout and largemouth bass in the exact same spots like we're doing today. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And, and I tell you, that's the thing about this basin, Lake Pontchartrain area and, and this entire surrounding area that fascinates me the most. That I think the fresh water, this area becoming a little less salty over time with some freshwater influence has made it a better fishery. Whereas you've got a lot of people who complain about the changes they've seen in the fishery. But you come out here and look at the habitat uh, the eel grass beds and the other grass beds that are back up in this marsh and the amount of food that's in here because of that freshwater interaction, all the shrimp and mullet and the pogies that we're seeing. And I think it's fascinating that we could come in here and catch redfish, ladyfish, speckled trout, bass, sometimes flounder, sometimes black drum, sheep's head, all of these things in the same areas. And there are some people who just don't see it as a benefit. And I just really frustrates me sometimes that the only thing we talk about in terms of freshwater influence is the negative parts of it. When you know, really everything that lives here and swims here along this coast has throughout its life cycle had to adapt to fresh and saltwater cycles you know, as the seasons change. As much as tropical storms and hurricanes are part of our life here during the late summer and the fall bringing salt water up here, floods are part of our life they're in the springtime. It's just the cycle of what happens in this basin. Now there's no doubt that you can have too much of a good thing. We definitely don't want too many storm surges coming in here. We definitely don't want too much fresh water. But when you get that right balance, uh, you see the explosion in 
habitat and food and different kinds of fish that live here. Yeah, what, you know, kind of, I think about a lot is, it, it, you know, obviously freshwater gets gets a bad rap in some circles in, in South Louisiana, but you compare our fishing to anywhere along the Gulf Coast and no place comes close. And what do we have far more of than they have anywhere else on the Gulf Coast? It's freshwater. That's why our fishing is so good. It's not good in spite of the freshwater. It's good because of the freshwater. Well, in name a place where you have coastal wetlands that look like this, and have the productivity of the ones that we have where you don't have a freshwater influence. It just doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. You don't find estuaries like this. You don't find wetland systems like this that have this productivity unless you've got freshwater entering a saltwater environment. And that's really what makes this place so unique. It's really, you know, the kinds of fish that thrive here, redfish, speckled trout, largemouth bass, they do so because they can adapt somewhat to those changes in salinities. Man, they're just perfectly suited to live in this environment. They can tolerate up to a certain amount of fresh water and, and the bass can tolerate up to a certain amount of salt water. Yeah, what's remarkable is, you know, you and I were both a little bit concerned. You know, we had two weeks of very, very high water here due to these recent tropical systems. And obviously it hadn't hurt the bass at all. I mean, we're, we're catching a good number of bass today. And we're not even targeting bass, we're just targeting speckled trout. Yeah, it just makes it so interesting. I mean, it's so interesting to pick a shoreline and you got a little trout here. Uh, it's so interesting to pick a shoreline or to pick a pocket or a drain and take a guess at what you're gonna catch. Right. Uh, and I think it's just fascinating. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of folks here have adapted to bringing home some of these bass. There's nothing wrong with taking them home to eat. And in fact, I think a lot of people have learned that they taste pretty darn good. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with bringing a handful of them home to eat because it's such a productive ecosystem. And if you do get too much of that saltwater influence because of a storm, it will kill them. Yeah, so you might as well eat them rather than have mother nature consume them. Sure. It's a very healthy, fishery in terms of fast product. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by H&H &H Lure Company and by Bill Lewis Lures and by Cito New Orleans and by SportsmansOutfitters.com and by Community Motors. Now we started today on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain and we, we caught fish everywhere. Oh shoot, missed that one. We caught fish everywhere we went. Missed another one. Uh, they just weren't really stacked up. We kind of just one here, one there. So we came to the south shore. Oh, there we go. That's a good fish. <laughs> That's a good trout. That's a good trout. All right. Hit the deck and thumped. That's a solid fish. So as I was saying before that fish in a row, oh, another one. Oh, get him, Jeff. Yes, I him. As I was saying before that fish interrupted, we came to the south shore and it's definitely a good call. We're picking up a good number of fish a variety of ways. Jeff is throwing a kind of a glow matrix, huh, Jeff? I think it's that ultraviolet. Isn't it? Ultraviolet? It might be so old it's looking like. Looking a little glow. I'm throwing a holy jolly on a 16th ounce death grip and C Mac is mostly throwing what is that a voodoo below a cork voodoo yeah. Voodoo below a cork and really all are about about equally productive and what we're fishing here is just an extensive eelgrass flat oh, get him c mac i kind of dragged that one a little bit good fish keeper, keeper. And I'll tell you this, everywhere we went today, the key has been finding that eelgrass. But Jeff, that's kind of kind of typical for this area, this, specifically this time of year, right? At Lake Punch Train, they have pockets. In some years, it might be around Bayou Liberty. Some of you might be around Bayou Lacombe. But you got to find that grass this time of year. Usually, teal season signals us the time when the trout move into the mouths of the bayous and into Lake Pontchartrain. And then for the next about two months, you'll catch them along the eelgrass. Sometimes you gotta look for the pockets and work the edges of the eelgrass. Sometimes you work over the top of it with a light weight. The key is you find the eelgrass, keep moving, find the eelgrass. Eventually you're gonna run into a nice little school of fish. They usually stay out here about two months and you can catch a nice mess of fish right off the North Shore. In addition to what we're doing now, you also like throwing jerk baits and muridines, right? Right. Uh, if you can get figure out where the trout are, sometimes they're real tight on the shoreline. If you find a deeper shore, it's got some grass. 
Mirrodine works over the top of the grass. You can throw some corks, um, shallow up and throw that. But a lot of times I'm just moving something moving. I'm trying to get that reaction bite. I'll throw a little light jig with a matrix shad or something or Berkeley rattling shrimp and just kind of work it real fast, reel it, stop it, reel it, stop it, cover a little water. And then when you find that area, you kind of sit on them and catch a few. What you got there, C-Mac? C-Mac, what you got? He's a, what the he's heck? A, if he's a trout, he's a big, big trout. <laughs> if he's a trout, we get in the net. He didn't come up at all, has he? Oh, we get in the net. Hold on, hold on. Slow down, bro. Nope. He's a trout with a big giant single spot on his tail. Dude, how crazy. I mean, to us it's just it's just what happens, but we're literally fishing right here, and in about five minutes time, we've caught speckled trout bass and redfish. Literally in the exact same spot. And now Jeff's got a nice trout. That's tail walking. Yeah, buddy. I will move from Louisiana when I'm dead. No How could you live anywhere else? Oh, oh, oh. Go down. You got too close. You got too close. Boy, y'all in them. Man, we in them, boys. We are in them. <laughs> God, this is fun. Finally, huh? Let's see how works. I think when they do those diversions, uh, like the Bonnie Carey, when the water comes in in the springtime, yeah. it puts a lot of sediment and mud and fresh water in here, and that eelgrass likes that. It grows. No doubt. So in the fall, we have big patches of eelgrass. Years when they had droughts on the Mississippi, we didn't have any uh, eelgrass in the lake. Right. We lost a lot of habitat in this lake when we had those. Those dry those years. Droughts. Yeah. And uh, I mean, and, and you know, they also they've also done a ton of restoration work for this lake. You know, the other thing that the uh, the fresh water has done is it's brought back a lot of the clam beds and the old shell beds that had been dredged up. But it's brought back a lot of that habitat too. And a good thing about those clams is that. Uh, Woo! The good thing about those clams <laughs> is that uh, is that they help filter out that water too. They can help filter the sediment and the nutrients out. Sure. Of oh yeah, no doubt. Right. Come on, come on. That's a good fish. Yeah, it's a good fish. Big chasing shrimp back Lake Pontchartrain okay. speckled yeah. trout. I did. I saw. Man, look at that! Lucky to get him. Beautiful. Man, days just don't get much better than this. Fishing a productive fishery on a flat, calm day with two really good anglers. Let me tell you, we put a bunch of fish in the boat and a wide variety at that. Just such a special day, man. I just love the fall. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Mass on.